Hi, my name is Deanna. I'm a senior mechanical engineering student at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. This summer, I've been working on an application creation platform called ThingWorks. And what my main project has been is integrating real-time data and hardware to create applications, or as ThingWorks calls it, mashups, that not only are interesting, but are also really exciting. The project I've developed is a temperature and humidity sensor connected to a Raspberry Pi microprocessor. This pushes data to ThingWorks and displays those values on the mashup that you see behind me. I also have graphs of how those values change over time and a rough location of where the sensor is on the map. What I have for a product is on the first level, a battery pack which supplies the necessary voltage to the Raspberry Pi, which is on the second level. The Raspberry Pi is basically a small computer with the same processing power as a 1997 desktop. The third level is connected by a ribbon cable and has the AM2302 temperature and humidity sensor and the necessary wiring. To make this project more interesting, I used PTC Creo to design a 3D case for this whole project. I'm going to show you how to put it together and what it looks like. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the temperature and humidity sensor pushes data to ThingWorks. When I blow on the sensor, you can see the temperature and humidity values changing on my mashup on the screen behind me, both on the numerical values and on the gauges below, as well as on the graphs I have here. When the humidity is higher than 95%, an alert will be sent to your phone. In the following video tutorials, I'm going to walk you through how to create an application powered by ThingWorks on your own Raspberry Pi microprocessor. Hello, you've seen how ThingWorks can be used to capture, display and send an alert using a Raspberry Pi microprocessor and the AM2302 temperature and humidity sensor. Now I would like to show you how easy it is to build an Internet of Things application using ThingWorks so that you can better understand how you might use it to further your education or how it might enhance the curriculum in your department. Let's suppose a fleet manager wants to track the location, speed and engine temperature of each of the trucks they own. The fleet manager may want for instance to sure that the drivers are not speeding and that their trucks are not overheating. Here is the ThingWorks application. On the left side we have two gauges which display the engine temperature and the current speed. On the right side we have a Google Map widget where we display the location of the truck. Now let's see how to create this simple application. First I will connect to the Composer. The ThingWorks platform for the academic program will be hosted in the cloud. All you need in order to connect to the Composer is an internet browser. The Composer is an end-to-end -end application modeling environment which helps the users to create the unique applications of today's connected world. Here on the left side there are all the entities displayed which can be created. For our example I will add one thing and connect it to my engine temperature, speed and location sensors. The values from the sensors are simulated but they could be actual sensors which are on a car. In order to create a thing I will cursor over the thing entities and click on the plus sign. This will open a new tab from where I can create my thing and add its properties and bindings. I will name my thing Truck Thing. ThingWorks operates on an object or thing driven model which means that you can represent the processes in terms of things which have properties. Every thing must have a thing template. For this example I will choose the remote thing template which will allow me to connect the sensors to my thing. In order to connect my truck sensors to ThingWorks, I will go to the Identifiers tab and search for the identifier which I want to choose. The identifier represents actually the sensors which are located on my truck. As we can see there are several identifiers available here, I will choose the first one. This will actually bind the remote sensors to my thing. The identifier allows that remote things are bound with an unbound remote thing even if the name is different. Once we have created a thing, its name cannot be changed. The only alternative is to duplicate and rename it. With the help of a powerful SDK kit which is provided by ThingWorks I was able to push simulated values for simulated sensors directly to ThingWorks. This allows me to monitor my sensors and take decisions depending on their value. If we go to the properties we will see that the is connected property is true so it means that our local remote thing is bound to the truck. 
in order to bind the temperature, speed and location sensors I need to click on manage bindings and select remote. Here are all the properties which are available displayed. I will add them to my things and click done. Now I have the three properties and if we click on the refresh button we can see the values which are pushed by my simulator. Now we have the thing and its properties. Let's create the mashup. In order to create a mashup I will use this time the spotlight search. I will type here plus mashup and hit enter. This will open the mashup builder. I will choose responsive because I want my widgets to fit to the resolution of the page and click on done. This is how the mashup builder looks like. On the left side we have all the widgets which we can drag and drop on the work area which is in the middle. On the right side we have the services part. From here we will add our service which will get the information from the sensors. And on the bottom we have two tabs connections and to do which help us to see if we did the correct bindings or we forgot to bind something. For this example I will need to split the page in two parts so I will pick the layout widget and drag and drop it onto my work area. I will choose two horizontal columns and click on done. Now I will split the first column into two rows so I will use the layout widget again. Now that we have split the workspace we can add our widget. First I will add the Google Map widget so I search for it and drag and drop it on my work area. Same for the gauges. So I drag and drop the first gauge and for the second one we can copy paste the first gauge created. We need also service which will put the values from our thing on the widgets. So I click on the green arrow on the right upper corner. In this menu I will type in the search entities track thing and select our thing. This will display all the available pre-built services. For our example we will want to get the properties of the thing so I search for the get property service and click on the blue arrow in order to add it. I will tick the mashup loaded property so that the service is called when I load the mashup and click on done. Now we need to do the binding so I will want to display the location on my Google map widget so I drag and drop the location property over the map and bind it to the selected location. Same for the engine temp and bind it to the data and also for the speed so I drag and drop the speed property over the gauge and bind it to the data. All widgets have properties and can be customized. For this example I will want to show the value of the sensors inside the gauges so I search for the value display mode and select the inside mode. I can also give it a name so let's type in the label field speed. Now in order to have also a selection marker displayed on the Google Map widget I will search for the show selection marker property and enable it. Now I will go to the info tab and give my mashup a name. Let's name it truck mashup, save it and view it. So as we can see the values coming from the sensors are displayed on the mashup. In just 5 minutes I've managed to create an application which can be accessed from any device which has an internet browser. Thingworks is a platform that can be used in many departments. For example, Thingworks supports numerous microprocessors, sensors and gateways and can be used to support courses in electrical engineering to enhance their capstone projects. While you don't have to be a programmer, Thingworks uses object-oriented program models and provides SDKs in C, Java, .NET and iOS, so there are exciting opportunities for students in computer science. And finally, Thingworks applications are easy to use, so students in disciplines such as business and marketing can use Thingworks to better understand how value is created and captured. Thingworks can also be used to have meaningful discussions about government policy, data security, privacy, or ownership. To learn more, visit the ptc.com/go/iot academic webpage.